right there. By far one of the most handsome devils ever created on this earth, huh? Nobody has a personality like you, Jaw. Every time I see another dog, nobody has a personality like you. You're one in a million, dude. We have a lot of stuff to do today, and I mean a lot. I literally have a list written down of all the errands I have to run. And that's not even including what I wanted to do for our vlog. That's just all the errands I have to run today. Because I'm going to have a busy day again tomorrow, it looks like. And uh, I want to knock out some of the tedious stuff. Okay, I'm sorry I'm boring you. I'll just shut up right now. I'm sorry. I'll just shut up right now. Nobody cares. You don't care. You don't care at all what I'm talking about, do you? You don't care at all. Only thing that you care about is going to the park and seeing your buddies and playing and having fun. Well, you knew if we weren't here yesterday, we'd have to be out here today. He ain't gonna put up with very much. See him over there? He ain't gonna put up with me not bringing him. So, if anybody wants to go on this juice cleanse with me, I figured I'd give you kind of some of the details and what to expect. Um, like I said, I lost a lot of weight doing this uh, before. Because basically you end up losing a ton of weight in the first week, and then like a pound a day after that. So, um... You need a juicer, not like a uh, blender, not uh, something to make smoothies. You actually have to get a juicer because part of what makes you lose the weight is that you're removing all the actual food and any kind of roughage or anything in your system and you're converting it into just like the vitamins and the liquid. So um, what I juice is, and, and I learned this from a Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead documentary, but um, I had gotten a juicer, my mom got me one. And then I got asked to do a, um, a commercial for a juicer because they knew I'd lost so much weight from it. So I did one from them. They gave me a really, really amazing juicer where like you would juice the stuff and everything that came out of the, um, the pulp or whatever was left of what you had sent through was pretty dry. So you were getting pretty much all the juice. But I always do uh, kale, celery, cucumber, lemon, like a little chunk of ginger and uh, an apple. A green apple, Granny Smith apple. And uh, basically, I have to wait to do it when I know I'll have about three days where I can completely control my eating. Like, not on a set, not running errands, not doing that kind of stuff. Because the first day, you're basically like in the bathroom all day. You're just flushing out stuff. You're just peeing and just everything. Um, and then the second day, you're kind of feeling like lethargic because you're just, you're detoxing. And... Um, yeah, the second and third day, you're kind of getting rid of the cravings. You're getting your body back into a better shape. And then by, for me, like around the third or fourth day, if I'm not around junk food and I'm at my house or whatever and I don't have it in the house, I quit craving it. And then about, I would say, day six or seven, I'm skipping meals. I'm, I'm, I have a really small appetite and it, that's the best way to do it. Now, the last time I did a juice cleanse, the reason I quit it was because I didn't realize I was being a selfish jerk. Um... And nobody said anything to me about it, but I, what I did was I got motivated to do this thing, and I did it right before Michael. And uh, Michael took me uh, on a trip with him and his fiance and their family to Bass Lake because that's where the Great Outdoors was filmed. And this is shortly before I was vlogging, like maybe a month before I was vlogging, so I really should have started then. You guys also missed out on a trip to Catalina that I should have vlogged. But, um,. Michael planned this this trip to Bass Lake for months and then of course me three days before it I'm like nope nope I want to lose weight I'm sick the way I feel whatever and then I get out there and he had planned on like planned all these meals that he was gonna make Swedish pancakes for breakfast he was gonna cook burgers he was gonna rent a boat and he was gonna cook on the boat all this stuff and uh, and I was on a juice cleanse and about halfway through the trip all of a sudden it dawned on me that part of this trip was him wanting to like him wanting to take care of his friends and share something and and that's when he proposed to his girlfriend at the time and he told me I was the only one that knew it was gonna happen and when it was gonna happen so when we went on the boat I said wink at me and I'll get my camera ready and I'll film this thing so I actually filmed it and it was pretty cool but um yeah I realized halfway through that part of this experience was that he wanted to like give this experience to his friends the people that he invited he wanted to feed them and make just take care of the whole weekend 
So halfway through, even though I wasn't hungry, and I brought enough juice with, with me for the whole trip, I actually succumbed and had one of his best meals because I just felt like, you know, it's not what this is about. And I never got back on the, the juice cleanse after that, after I finished all that. So I'm gonna do it for real. Um, and as long as I, like I said, I, I'm gonna do it for like at least probably a week. So I've done it before for like a month. But um, I, I, mainly what you wanna do is you wanna incorporate it into your life and not make it solely your life. But sometimes it's, you know, if you want to drop weight, it's a good way just juicing to, uh, and not anything else to lose weight fast. Oh, he got a tennis ball. Jock, can I have the ball? Guess not. Bring me the ball. If I go for this ball, he's going to run. Watch. Give me the ball. Can I have it? This is what he does with the other dogs. He even does it with me. Keep away. Guess what, sucker? You dropped it. You're supposed to bring it back, not me go to you. There you go. There you go. Good boy. He took the ball and went and laid over there. He's waiting for me to come after him. He found about one foot past where the shade is. He's no sucker. Look at him. The sun came out and it got a little hot. I started sweating under my shirt. This jacket I have right here has like a uh, like a fake fur lining so it keeps you really warm but it keeps me so warm that I start sweating so I'm, unless I want my shirts I have two shirts on unless I want them sticking to me jackass come off look at that beautiful sky that is an absolutely crystal clear well for Los Angeles crystal clear sky man that is a real joy to look at for me Sometimes I forget to turn around or just stop and look up, you know? Busy with 850 million other things. Sometimes the sky's worth looking at. So this place actually does pretty decent quality used tires if you'll pay, if you'll pay cash. So I'm getting some new, uh, new used tires to put on my car. Quick stop in here. Believe it or not, I actually have to buy something at Home Depot for my, I don't know, maybe four, four trips a year here. One tiny 99 cent little thing. And that's it right there. That thing will clean it just about anything off of anything. You can clean a ink off of a baseball with that thing with no water. Pretty cool. But what I'm doing with it is I accidentally got some paint on some of my Chris Pauly or Jordans. And I'm trying to get the paint off of the shoes. And I think I can just rub this thing on there and it might take it off. Because if I can get the shoes clean enough, the treads are pretty much worn out. I've cleaned the shoes pretty well. I'm just going to see if Chris Paul will sign them. Everyone's favorite puppy needs some food. Even though he didn't come on the adventure today, I'm going to swing by and pick him up some food. In an effort to start getting healthy again, I'm gonna, next week I'm gonna start probably doing another juice cleanse or just reincorporating it into my life. And that's why it's worth it to come to this Ralph's. This one does not taste very good, but it's almost done at least. Well, I read online that there's something called the Sanford and Son Walk of Fame. I gotta go. I love Sanford and Son. One of my all time favorite shows. Top three, for sure. Along with A-Team and, I don't know, maybe Entourage? I don't know. It's hard to like pick your favorite favorites, but San Francisco's definitely one that I never got tired of. See, we have industry and people with real jobs in Hollywood too. It's not all movie stars. All right guys, you literally almost saw a grown man cry. I overshot where I was going and went somewhere else and realized I'm like, wait, they just built this. Looked everywhere for what I was looking for and I couldn't find it. I'm like, did they get rid of it? You've got to be kidding me. And I realized it's the wrong address. So I'm going to get back to where I'm supposed to be. I'll show you guys what we're here for. All right. Now, that building right in front of us with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards on it, 
that actually used to be uh, Red Fox's production studio. It was Fox Productions. And uh, when he was doing Sanford and Son, everything Sanford and Son operated out of this office throughout the 70s. Uh, there's something pretty cool right in front of the building I want to show you guys, so we're going to head over there right now. Back in the day, they say that the, uh, the entire wall was painted red. This side that you can see where the mural is, it was all red and it had a caricature of the Red Fox Fox logo, like a caricature of a fox. And uh, up until recently, this building and a lot of the buildings on this block were not being used and were being considered for demolition. So when I found this address, I immediately was like a little bit worried. From, uh, from everything I understand, right here, 933, this sparkly building right here, where it's now like all that white marble right up the center. Apparently it used to be red. That was red, the windows were of course, you know, the color windows are. And then where the, uh, the mural of Keith and Mick Jagger are up here, that was all red with the caricature. Now what's cool about this is Red Fox really appreciated the people that helped make uh, what he was doing something special. So one of the things he did was he had all the people that were affiliated with him, people that, some of the names I, sure I won't even recognize, um, but he would allow them to sign and put their handprints, footprints. Now some of my red were actually like people that, um, they were actually people that uh, like helped run the, the actual business itself, like maybe the, the manager and everything. The Black Hill Billy, Billy Allen, James O, Dap Sugar, Willie, and see, he even thanks Red. Now, somewhere over here, there's one of Red. And there's also one of everybody's favorite on Esther. Right there, Claudette. Oscar Wade. Tony Major. Renee Davis, there. Leroy and Skillet, uh, why do I know that name? Oh, oh, so I believe Leroy and Skillet did like um, some like party comedy albums with with uh, Wanda, who uh, played on Esther. Oh, look, Lynn Hamilton. Of course, Donna. The, the, the lovely Donna. Lovely Donna. Yeah, this place is it's affectionately called the uh, Sanford and Son Walk of Fame. And I'll be honest, I've walked past here a handful of times, never even noticed that it was here. I mean, it's literally right here in front of this office building. Fox Productions. Let's look around. I, I, I honestly, I did, when I, uh, I overshot this, and then when I saw the address, I wanted to be as shocked as you guys are. So I actually didn't, uh, I didn't come look at any of the names or any of the footprints before I got here. So I'm kind of just wandering around looking, seeing what I can see as well. Some of the, um, some of the concrete around it, I can see where there's like a faded footprint or faded something written, but you can't, you can't see it. My theory is that uh, wherever Red Fox's footprints were, that they would have been... Uh, somebody probably found a way to get those up. Let me look up Claudette DuPont, because there's some handprints there. See, I don't see... Um, I don't see the guy who played Grady, I don't see the guy who played Bubba, or Rollo, or Officer Smitty, Damon Wilson, I don't see any of those people out here yet, so, let's see, but I did, uh, the reason I keep saying Aunt Esther is because when I was researching this, one of the things that I was able to find was a picture of Aunt Esther putting her footprints into the uh, concrete out here, I just don't happen to see it. Yep, I think that's it. Everything I can find, I can't find the Wanda page out here. I see that one says Poo Poo Man. 
but uh, really other than, than Donna, those are the only names I, I recognize. So anyway, hope that was interesting to someone. There's no, there's no actual, uh, there's no actual house or anything for me to go visit from Sanford and Son. This is really kind of about the only kind of way of memorializing the show I can do. So if I can find a picture of the old Fox production studio the way it originally looked and any of the pictures of people putting their footprints out here, I'll definitely include those in this vlog. We're out of here. Let's hit the 99 cent store and see if I can find anything entertaining in there. The only thing the 99 cent store helped me out with was getting these Merry Mini Ho-Hos, which I probably shouldn't have gotten. But man, look at those. How do you turn that down? Got a little bit chilly, so I had to throw a jacket on. I, uh, you know, I just, and it wasn't my fault, but I'm just not too overly thrilled with the Sanford, Sanford and Son Walk of Fame, so started looking around to see if there's anything else I could do to uh, give this amazing show a tribute and I found something. So I'm gonna hop on the train, go hit that place, go ahead and add that in. That's a subway. A little subway here has movie cameras in it. Literally. Oh how perfect. I would say 99 times out of my life I've come here. I always am buying my ticket when the train shows up and I have to wait for the next train. This time I literally get to the foot of the stairs and I hear it. So far so good. I have about six or seven places that, that are like kind of my go-to places online when I'm looking for either somewhere to go and explore that day or an address. and. One of the sites gave me this address today, and uh, I'd say this site in particular, a quarter of the time they give an address, the address is wrong, but the neighborhood's right. So I think this might be one of those. I looked up the address that they had online, and I don't see how it's possible that that was the, uh, what I'm looking for. But for one of the rare times, since I wasn't happy with the uh, Walk of Fame, I looked up the address and I saw that, uh, the, this is actually my church right here. Um, I saw that a place two or three buildings away looks like it could be it, so I'm gonna try it. And no offense to Donna from Sanford and Son, but her footprints just aren't gonna cut it for a Sanford and Son tribute. Check out the awesome mural next to the smoke shop. I think we all know who that is. Well, at first, the address that I found was right here, this automotive place. It didn't look quite right to me, so I kept searching online, and I found another address, and it kind of makes sense, and I'll explain why. That's right. Believe it or not, this was Sanford and Son Salvage. It's the same building. They've just redone the whole front and uh, where we would have seen Lamont make that turn to drive into the uh, driveway, it's actually right here. Now the way I was able to find it, because it looked so much different, is, uh, is that apparently, uh, at one point, there was a TV show called Emergency. And apparently there's an episode of Emergency where the ambulance pulls up right in front of the same storefront that they use for Sanford and Son Salvage. And what the people said was, if you watch that episode, you can actually see this stoplight in the shot. You can see a vacant lot. And uh, they said, based on that and looking at Google Earth, for this neighborhood that this is exactly where it would have been and that that driveway would have actually been an alley that went all the way through. It's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? 
I guess you could say that about anything. You could say that that was the place, but seems like uh, on a message board for San Francisco, somebody somebody uh, mentioned this, and then a handful of people confirmed that that was the case. That that that's how everybody's been able to find it was that it was an emergency. So there it is. Old uh, put a bunch of junk in front of there, and uh, instead of that window, you'd have had a door. And old Fred Sanford sitting in front of there. Then he would have uh, he would have walked up. He would have walked up in. And that's uh, that would have technically been Sanford and Son salvage. Technically, that would have been it. So, upon reading further onto the message board. Somebody actually commented and said that this actually used to be called Joe's Junk Shop back then and that he knew for sure that they filmed the opening sequence here because he lived two blocks away on Willow and said that he actually watched them film it. He rode his bike up here and watched them film it. So right there would have been Fred Sanford's uh, Sanford and Son Salvage. The website I found that on was called uh, Sitcoms Online, if you want to look it up. That statue. You know, look at these things. Pretty cool. Woo! Alright, I'm finally home. Man, what a day. That was a lot of stuff to do. And I still am not finished. I still have to go down to the copying place and uh, print off some forms for my work on Saturday. So, it's been a pretty long day, but I really wanted to do this one today because uh, my grandpa has donated to the Patreon, and the only vlog that he's asked for in the entire time that I've been doing these was... He always constantly makes a joke about me going down to Watts and uh, seeing the Sanford and Son stuff. And I actually never thought there was anything to see in Sanford and Son. And since I found it recently, I really wanted to do this really quickly. Um, I mean, like really promptly from when I found out about it. Uh, just for him. Just because he watches all the time and just because he's such a big supporter. Give him what, uh, what he'd like to see. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the Sanford and Son Walk of Fame, which wasn't all that spectacular, but... Probably would have been if they wouldn't have taken all the good uh, footprints out. And we finally found the Sanford and Son location from the, uh, the opening. Pretty cool. So, I'm going to hang out for a little while with John and see what else the day has in store for us. Well, I just went and got my mail and got my first Christmas card of the season. From... Roku. This guy on this, like, unicycle, one-wheel deal. If you didn't happen to see it on my Facebook, or if you were interested in knowing, uh, it did come to pass that the Wheel Inn restaurant was demolished today, so. I went there two days ago, vlogged it, and uh, like I thought, it's gone, so. A little piece of history that we were lucky enough to get to uh, memorialize in the vlog, so. Whew. Lucky us, huh?